Adam Hatz presents... The Strange Dr. Weird. Good evening. Come in, won't you? So what's the matter? Surely you're not nervous. Or perhaps it will help calm you. If I tell you a story I heard just the other day about a fortune that can be yours for the taking. All you have to do is go and get it. I call the story The House Where Death Lived. Before you and I walk into the terrifying darkness of Dr. Weird's world, I think it's only fair on behalf of our sponsor to warn you that you'd better hurry if you want to see the latest fall line in up-to-the-minute Adam Hat. Believe me, gentlemen, there's no better hat value anywhere in America than an Adam, worn by the famous, favorite of millions. There are thousands of Adam hat shops and authorized dealers from coast to coast. Stop in your nearest Adam hat shop tomorrow. Now, Dr. Weird. My story, The House Where Death Lived, begins with two men crouching in the bushes, staring at a great lonely old mansion on top of a windswept hill. Well, there it is. Spooky old joiner. Yeah, I don't like this job. Hey, you're nuts. We couldn't ask for anything easier. Yeah, but somehow that place gives me the creeps. What do you mean? You're a detective, remember? A private dick here to protect the old boy. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, okay, let's get on inside and tell the old guy the detectives, Murphy and Smith, are here. Now, wait a minute. In town, they said old man Crawford has a handyman who stays with him until after dark and then goes home. We're going to wait. I'd rather see the old man alone. You get me? And so the two men waited in the gathering darkness outside until Frank, the handyman, left for the night. A few moments later, they banged the old bronze knocker on the front door of the ancient house. Yes? Who is it? Hey, what's that? There must be a loudspeaker, of course. Yeah, quite right. Here's a loudspeaker. Are you Smith and Murphy, the detectives I sent for? Yeah, yeah, we are. Come in, please. You'll find me upstairs in my bedroom. A minute later, old Joshua Crawford, sitting up in bed, surveyed his two visitors. So you're my detectives. Which of you is Murphy and which of you is Smith? Uh, I'm Sam Murphy and this is my partner, Bill Smith. I'm glad you're here. Very glad. I have work for you to do. In a vault in the cellar are jewels worth a quarter of a million dollars. And those jewels must be carefully guarded. Because they're bait for a trap I'm setting. A trap to catch seven murderers. Trap to catch seven murderers? Yes. Ten years ago, I was a wealthy man. I had a home on Long Island. And I had a daughter whom I loved. I had a son-in-law who was like a son to me. Then one night, when I was away on business, a gang of thieves, seven of them, invaded my house. They were after the jewels I kept in a vault there. A vault to which only I knew the combination. Say, do you mean to shut up? Uh... Go on, Mr. Crawford. Those seven men would not believe I was the only one who could open that vault. In the end, they killed my daughter and her husband. Huh? I see. So uh, you're that Crawford, huh? Yes. I spent my entire fortune trying to trace the criminals. In the end, I succeeded. Huh? You did? Yes. I learned their names. They were called Big Jim Donovan, Trigger Thompson, Nicky Lavender, Tony Morton, Freddie Lake, Johnny Frisco, and Lefty Williams. Uh, a tough bunch of monkeys. How do you know their guilt? I know. I spent a million dollars to find out. And all my money was gone. All but the jewels for which my children were murdered. Those I kept. I came here with them to bait a trap for murder. You mean that... Listen, I know where five of those seven men are. All except Johnny Frisco and Lefty Williams. Yeah. Uh, now, if I say I know those men are guilty, even though I couldn't prove it in court, would you agree that they should be punished? Absolutely, Mr. Crawford. And if I can lure them here, would you help me execute them? Uh, uh, execute them? Yes. Help me to punish these men I've named, and the jewels in the vault are yours. Well, what do you say? We're your men. Those rats deserve executing. And, Mr. Crawford, if you can get them inside this house... We'll be the executioners. 
In just a moment, we'll return to our story and learn what happens to the murder trap set by old Joshua Crawford. Meantime, I believe Dr. Weird would welcome a brief escape from his shadowy world. Am I right, Doctor? Yes. Yes, young man, you are right. All of us welcome the world of bright sunshine, far from the terrors of the night. I could say uh, more. But... You rest a moment, Doctor. I'll say more. How pleasant it is, gentlemen, during these bright days of fall sunshine to step along knowing you're feeling right and looking right. And nothing gives that right look to a man like a really smart fall hat. Next time you're near an Adam hat store, stop for a minute and glance into the window. Some style, huh? Notice the variety of fall hats on display. Then step inside and try one on. You'll find the hat for you. Perfect fashion, perfect fit, no matter what shape head you have. See the latest Adam 5. Genuine hand block, fine all-fur felt hats. Up to the minute in style. Price, only $5. They're America's famous hat value. Other Adam hats are $3.45 to $10. Now... I see Dr. Weird is ready for the rest of tonight's play. Doctor? And now to continue my little story of the house where death lived. Old Joshua Crawford, promising to tell the detectives more about his strange plan for vengeance in the morning, has dismissed them and fallen asleep. And Smith and Murphy are talking. <laughs> the idea of him trying to punish seven tough killers. Yeah, there's something about this setup I don't like. Ah, forget it. It's just lucky sent for us. Our good luck, see? Someday we'll run across Big Jim Donovan or one of the others and tell him about it. Oh, will they get a laugh? Yeah, come to think of it, where is Big Jim and Trigger and Nicky these days? Keep our ears open. We ain't heard a word of them for months. Ah, they're smart and lying low, that's all. Now, can it, will you? We got something to do tonight. We got to prove we're good detectives by finding that vault those jewels are in. Come on, let's get going. For an hour, the two men silently prowled the big house while old Joshua Crawford slept. Then, in a far corner of the cellar... Hey! Hey, I found it! This door's a dummy, see? Look, Look, here's the door of a vault right behind it. Yeah, yeah, but look at it. It's like a bank vault. We'll never get it open. Well, what are we going to do? Wait till tomorrow and see if we can get the old man to tell us the combination? No. We'll get that combination from him tonight. <laughs> now, how about that combination, Mr. Crawford? Or shall I tell Sam to use that cigarette again? Oh, no, I'll tell. Seven right, 13 left, four right, 10 left. And zero. Seven right. Thirteen left. Four right. Ten left. Then zero. Now, try it. Bang! That does it. He was telling the truth. Yeah, a fat lot of good it'll do him. Come on. Let's see what's inside. Great gosh, a whole room in here. Yeah, I'll say it is. The walls are solid stone, too. Look, here's a little table with a cash box on it. Open it. Has it got the jewels in it? I'll say it has. Look at them. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds. A quarter of a million bucks worth. <laughs> yeah, what's so funny? Oh, what a laugh, that crazy old coot. Saying he was going to use this ice for bait for seven murderers. <laughs> now we got the bait. I don't like it down here. Come on, let's put the ice in our pockets and get out of here. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> huh? What is it? That vault door. It's shut. No, it can't be. What it is. There's no way to open it from this side. But it's got to be. Push against it. Got him! Uh, it's, it's locked. We're locked in. Yeah, but how could it be? Hey, how did it happen? It happened when you lifted the cash box. An electric mechanism locked the vault door when the rat took the bait. That's him. That's his voice. Yes, I mean to the loudspeaker. The whole house is wired with loudspeakers and microphones, you see. I've heard every word you uttered. Listen, Mr. Crawford, you got us wrong. We were not really going to hurt you. No, no, no. Now you got to let us out of here. To be sure. Push on the stone directly behind the cash box. Yeah. A hidden door will open. A hidden door, yeah? Yeah, I got you. Come on, Bill. Right, here's the stone. Help me push it. The whole wall's open. Here's the wall on the other side. I find it a much larger room in there, I assure you. Come on, Bill. There must be a way out. Yeah. Now the wall is close on my head. Stop it over there. No, it's too late. Never mind. You won't be lonely. Look about you. Huh? You'll find many old friends to keep you company. What's he talking about? I don't know. Shine your light around. Yeah. <gasps> Look. 
Seven coffins. Seven coffins in a row on the floor. Look inside them. You'll find your friends. The dry air has preserved them very well. Ah, big Jim Donovan on this one. And here. Here's Trigger Thompson. Mickey Lavender. Tony Morton. Freddie Lee. These last two arrested. Yes. They're for you unless you wish to confess and stand trial. Confess? What do you mean, confess? That you are Johnny Frisco and Lefty Williams. The last two of the seven murderers I've been seeking for ten years. No, no, no. It took my detective a long time to find you. You were clever. From being crooks, you changed your names and became private detectives. But I found you at last. Now will you confess and stand trial? No, no, you're wrong. I gave the others the same chance, but each refused to confess. Look at them. They died a far more painful death than the electric chair. They died of starvation. Okay, Mr. Crawford, we confess. I am Johnny Frisco. Bill is Lefty Williams. Yes, yes. Now come down, let us out. You've got to let us stand trial, you hear? Yes, you got to. <laughs> I can't come down to let you out. You've tied me up. I can't get loose. You'll have to stay there until Frank arrives in the morning to set me loose. <laughs> You'll have to stay there with your friend. <laughs> I hope you won't be alone. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, poor old Mr. Crawford was unable to release his two victims from the trap he'd set for them. In the morning, he was found tied up and laughing, unable to speak a single intelligent word. He's in an asylum now, still laughing. And Frisco and Lefty, well, they're still down in that secret room. Their pockets stuffed with jewels. But by now, of course, they're probably quite dead. So if you want the jewels, you only have to go there and open the vault. And you'll have to go now. Hmm, too bad. But perhaps you'll... Drop in on me again soon. I'm always home. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house of Dr. Weird. That man will be back here again in a moment with a word about next week's scalp tingler. Meantime, it's not very far from scalp to hat. And having gone that far, perhaps I should remind you that this program is brought to you by Adam Hatt, America's famous hatter. Seriously, gentlemen, I hope you'll take a look at the latest fall line of Adam Hatt. Their top quality, identified by the famous Adam Crest. And their price, three forty-five to ten dollars. Visit your Adam Hat shop tomorrow. Now, that man, Dr. Weir. I hope you'll drop in again next week. I want to tell you about a cat that had a human soul, or at least acted as if it had. And so it... Uh, but the rest of the story will have to wait until your next visit. Good night. Join us again next week at the same time for another visit with the strange Dr. Weird. <laughs> Strange Dr. Weird, directed by Jock McGregor, is presented by the makers of Adam Hats. The hats that are always topped in quality. This is Mutual.